Walaadiyati dubaha. <laughs> these are the banana fritters. <laughs> that makes them small these days. Oh my god. Did you you did good, good. Did you have a good time? You did good. No nap said milk a hundred times. <laughs> the best thing about Islam is Islam. The worst thing about Islam. Um oh should I be saying that? Am I gonna get some backlash? Assalamu alaikum guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. It is Ramadan day. What day is it, Mai? 15, 14, 14, you, you wrong. Is Ramadan day 14. Outfit check. Ooh. You're killing it today. I've decided to go for the Islamic jack-ups today. <laughs> sunnah, boy, sunnah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> today we are going to go to my parents house my sister has been studying her phd for That's four years crazy. four years <laughs> and on friday she handed in her last um assignment now she's got like a viva coming up in a few months but it's a celebration day alhamdulillah so we're gonna go over there ah! i said alhamdulillah get on the bed get on the bed you living a good life, you ain't you? You're pretending to sleep. <gasps> wakey, wakey. <laughs> so we're gonna do a bit of that. Amara's baked brownies. Um, she might have burnt them, and she's really stressed about it. But I tried really hard. Yeah, she did really, really well. I'm not. I'm not bothered that you. If they're burnt, it's just the thought that counts, isn't it? It's better than a chocolate orange. Apple. Apple. Yeah, you be careful, you know how to get off the bed. Get off the bed properly. Don't walk off the bed. Good girl, yeah. Oh, I still can't be panicking then. <laughs> Muck. Huh? Muck. Say again? Muck. What on earth could you be asking for? So for uh, for Maya's first birthday, uh, this is one of the presents that my family bought. Hey? Yeah. Is that good? I might press this. <laughs> it looks like the um you're from Never Ending Story, Falco. Never Ending Story. Yay! Hey. Na, 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 na. Uh. What's that called? Uh. What's the call what's it called? The must have? Quran. Uh. Yeah. Recently Amaya wants me to read the Quran to her all the time, which is amazing. Uh. I'm doing something right. Walikulli ummat. Ummat. Firashaw wassamaa binaa. See, this is why I should teach you one that you can know because you will remember, won't you? Walaadiyati dubaha. Walaadiyati dubaha. Wal. Adiyati dubaha. Can you say Sadaqullah Ladim? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Asalaamu Alaikum, guys. <laughs> Cutie five. Can you say Salam? <laughs> She's so cute. Asalaamu Alaikum, guys. It's Ramadan day 14. 14. Woo woo. Woo We're on our way to Sofian's parents' house because his sister has finished her PhD. Woo woo. <laughs> like four years ago when I met Sofyan, I was I used to make these brownies, right? And Halima used to say that she really liked them. His sister used to say, I really love these brownies. So then today I woke up and I was like, I should make her these brownies. Guys, it's been a long time, right? I did the recipe and it was fine. But the oven's different, I swear. I know I always say something goes wrong, but I swear the oven's different. You know when you use the oven in your mum's house and then suddenly you're grown up and you use your own oven and it, everything just turns out a bit different. It's one of them, innit? So then I call my mum and I'm like, mum, it's not working out right. She's like, turn temperature down, do this, do this. She's helping me like, what's the word? What's the word when you're trying to fix things on the spot? Troubleshoot, she's helped me troubleshoot, right? I turn it down and everything, it's just not going well. Mom's like, do you want me to make it for you? You can take it with you. I was like, no, 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 it'll be fine, it'll be fine. I just sprinkled those icing sugar off it and I'm calling it a day. But, swear to goodness, it reminded me of this. This is the light version of it. When I heard this quote the other day that Omar Suleiman said, I thought, that is deep. But today it applies in a lighter way. This is what he said, and I wrote it down because I thought, oh my gosh, I need to remember this forever. 
in any area you lack with your ability, Allah has given you a head start with some other blessing. You know? And I felt that today in my soul. I felt like where I lack in my ability sometimes with baking, even though I bake well, I swear I do, Allah has given me a head start and some other blessing. You know what I mean? You don't have to be great at everything, you know what I mean, babes? You know what I mean? Eh? I agree. You don't have to be. No, people. In any area you lack, babes, with your ability, Allah has given you some other blessing. Sure. Like an amazing wife and child. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Where do I, where do I lack? Allah. Uh, babes, that's not for cameras. I, I, I wouldn't expose you Somewhere like that. Somewhere I lack. Where do I lack? I wouldn't expose you like that. Give me one place, it's not man. one of my strengths to pull out somebody else's Give me one, one, weaknesses. One, one, where do I lack in one place? When you're tired, you're terrible. When you're done, you're done. Are you talking to yourself? No, I'm talking to you. <laughs> See last Ramadan, I don't really remember because it was postpartum and it was just a blur. But the Ramadan before that, there was like a word that I really like thought about a lot and it was patience. And it was because it was just after the miscarriage we were going through like a tough time. And I remember just thinking about sabr and patience. There was that quote from the Quran, so be patient with a beautiful patience. And that just stuck in my head the whole time. And this year, I feel so grateful, Alhamdulillah. I feel like this year the word for Ramadan, not that you need a word, but this year it's like gratitude and gratefulness. And I'm just so grateful, Alhamdulillah. And I was just thinking like, nobody ever has it all at once. We do not have it all, but You've got to be so grateful for the blessings that you have because alhamdulillah, do you know to have your health and to have your children's health and to have your parents' health and to have a roof over your head and to have food, like you can't you can't have everything you want in one go. You can't have all your du'as answered in one go. But to have like all these things still, subhanAllah, do you know what I mean? And the rest will come. Allah will answer your du'as. The rest will come. But alhamdulillah. These are alhamdulillah, Maya. We're so grateful and happy, right? Well, Amaya's happy with the crayon. That's, that's Amaya's. Yeah. Babe, what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful that I'm able to fast today. And I'm grateful that you're you're the yin to my yang right now because my I'm feeling the fast. <laughs> and you're evidently not fasting. I think we just said all of that last part in one breath. <laughs> so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. Are you looking forward to your dad's fritters? Oh banana fritters, saltfish fritters, red velvet cake to celebrate. Oh, Oh, you know what this is? It says choice of sign. Oh, the bottom line. Mm -hmm. There is no same line. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah? Just one of the Russian yeah. talks. Just do that a lot. What is it? She's saying hot. She's saying hot. It's not hot. It's not hot, Mike. What's that? It's a cow? Mmm. My, what does a cow say? She says bet. My, what does a cow say? Bet. No, cow says mmm. <laughs> 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 it's another animal. Sounds like. Leopard. Mm. Look at that. Or elephant. Yeah. Okay, so the way it's going today is everybody's ordered their own meals. My brother's round with his wife, mum, dad, sister, me, Amara, and Amaya. And I'm just going to show you my dad's world famous saltfish patties, saltfish fritters, and um, banana fritters. I'm going to make them next week, inshallah. Jamaicans, get at me in the comments. What you reckon? Mind you, these have been made for a bit now. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to heat them back up a bit. And these two. Oh yes. These are the banana fritters. Ha <laughs> ha, that makes them small these days. Oh my god. How was that, Maya? Did you you did good, good. Did you have a good time? You did good. No naps, said milk a hundred times. <laughs> One poopy nappy. Successful. Dada. Let's try and fix it. Oh, you want to put it together? alaikum guys, what's going on? I just thought I'd have a little chat with you tonight. Um, one of those Ramadan late night chats. I have my coffee to hand. I had a cup of coffee about three nights ago and um, normally I put two scoops in. I wasn't ready for it. I was up at two in the morning. My heart was beating fast. <laughs> Amara and Amaya had gone to sleep. 
uh, I ended up going to the gym at like two in the morning, doing some weights, and then I was just cardio, power walking, listening to a podcast. Alhamdulillah, uh, I felt it the next day anyway. A bit scared now because I'm drinking this coffee and it might all happen again. So I had a couple thoughts I just thought I'd share with everybody. Am I uh, walking around with these crayons these days? When I was little, I used to have this like block or a sword or something in my hand the whole time and I would never let go of it. And Amaya started doing the same thing. It must be a baby thing, tactile in it. I picked her up earlier and when she um, came onto my lap, it snapped like against her drinking cup and it was broken into two pieces. Amara's taught her to say, help, help. So she came to me and picked up the two things and said, help, help, and then kind of put them back together. I guess being a father, you get these moments where you have to give lessons to your daughter or lessons to your children. Um, being a parent in general, actually, not just being a father. And it was one of those profound moments where I know she doesn't, she, well, she actually does understand. She doesn't understand the intricacies of what I'm explaining, but the general, like the general message she seems to get. I had a moment where I told her that, okay, this crayon is broken now. Um, we can't stick it back together, but it's it works just the same as all of the other crayons. In fact, you've got two crayons now. Um, it's a bit easier to hold and look at, let's draw with this one. It still works all the same. Kind of like forced it back together and pushed it together and then broke it apart again. She seemed to understand that. And it was one of those moments where I was like, yeah, that was, that was deep, man, that was deep. Alhamdulillah, we don't always get moments like that in life, but just speaking to Amaya then and telling her about the crown, it made me think how sometimes we don't always have the most positive outlook on things in life. The crayon was broken and I flipped it and said, okay, well look, now we have two crayons. You know, one of them was a bit blunt on one side, but still this crayon works just the same as all of your other crayons work. It still works, but we can't put it back together. Let's have a positive spin on this and still focus on the positive things. And I think we tend not to do that so much in life. We're always focusing on the negatives. Maybe we're upset in certain aspects of our marriage, certain aspects of our personal self, our own growth, our looks, our financial status, our friendships, our physiques. There are many aspects in which we choose to focus on the negatives or choose to focus on how other people have so much going for them and we don't. And this is actually an Islamic concept where we're taught to think positively. Um, Allah says, your Lord is as you expect him to be. So if we think positively of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of God, he is as we expect him to be. The fact that so many believers have dreams of going to paradise is evident of the fact that we do view Allah to be merciful because how do we deserve that? How, with, with the lives that we've lived and the things that we've done so many wrongs so many sins it's only by the mercy of God that we could enter into paradise anyway but I just thought it was a it was a nice reminder to say that we should be focused on the positive things I actually watched a video the other day and there was a study in it saying um, it was a question like what do you think um, which one's better for you thinking more positive things or thinking less negative things and um, the, it, it was found that thinking less negative things has a much greater impact on your um, self-esteem is much better for you um, overall than thinking more positive things so not thinking negatively about things um, in general is is <laughs> it's just better for you all around and we do need to remain grateful so it is Ramadan and there are a lot of people watching Islam content Ramadan content I mean people have been um, sympathetic or kind of open towards Islam for forever it is one of the fastest well the fastest growing religion I think and then with everything that happened um, in Palestine a lot of people well, Allah works in mysterious ways and a lot of people have started softening towards Islam studying Islam because of the way that um, regardless of the adversity how our faith remains strong and I just wanted to say to anybody who is softening towards Islam or interested in Islam or just curious um, in general, I would generally give like two pieces of advice. So my first piece of advice would be to read the Quran. As you can see, I've got a Mus'haf, I've got a Quran um, next to me right here. If I just open it, if I just open it, you can see, I've, I've referenced this Quran in another video, by the way, this is my trusty Quran that goes everywhere with me. It's the one that I had from when I was like, we did the math last time, didn't we? What was it? 19... 1990, 1997 I won't show my years but um, I was less than 10 look as you can see the script here what surah is this? surah Yunus we read the Quran in Arabic but 
my first piece of advice would be to pick up a Quran and read it in your native tongue. Uh, most likely English if you're watching our videos. Go and find a Quran. I mean, if you're interested in a Quran, I can send some to you. I can um, refer you to a link in which you can buy the Quran, which I think has the best English translation or is the most user friendly. Start reading the Quran. Read it in English. What, what, what I was saying, sorry, is one of the things that we, we read the Quran. So I'm reading the Quran just before. And we read in Arabic. We are encouraged to read the Quran, the Quran in Arabic as well. And though we do get some kind of spiritual um, spiritual benefits from reading the Quran, the message is lost if you don't study it in your native tongue. For instance, I, I, I can read Arabic. I can write Arabic. I can read Urdu. I can write Urdu. Although Urdu was my first language. So I'm a bit flaky with it these days. But I've never been able to speak um, Arabic and i'm studying now alhamdulillah but it was it was it's a problem to me basically that i can read and memorize so much surah well it's a bliss it's, it's it's a credit to the the quran the fact that we're able to memorize so much of the quran and have no idea what what it is saying but read it in in english and i think i think one of the things that um even many muslims miss is reading the quran in the language that we understand and actually comprehending and understanding and using our aqla intellect to dissect the stories and the messages that Allah has has um, conveyed to us, the stories which He has told us, the 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 general meanings and morals, it's very important. So, anyway, my advice to <laughs> anyone interested in Islam, I'm going off on tangents. We have to bear in mind that I've been fasting all day, and I just had a coffee, so I don't really know what's going on. Read the Quran. Read the Quran. Something that makes me really sad uh, these days is the state of the state of Muslims. Oh, should I be saying that? Am I going to get some backlash? I don't mean like that. The best thing about Islam is Islam. The worst thing about Islam um, are the people, are Muslims. And when I say, I don't mean Muslims are terrible people. Muslims are the best of people. I mean, the things that Muslims do in the name of Islam or the things that Muslims preach or the actions um, in the name of Islam. And the thing which saddens me the most is that Islam came for one reason. Now, obviously, I, I'm, I believe that all of the prophets came with the same message. Um, the faith at that time may had have may have had different names. They might have called it Judaism. They might have called it Christianity. But the message was the same. And the last version of that message is Islam. So all of the prophets all of the obviously all of the prophets came from the same place preaching the same message they didn't come from different gods they came from one god they they came preaching the same message which evolved over time they gave okay maybe just do, do not do not steal do not kill next one comes well, let's make that a bit more expansive okay and these are the reasons that you don't do this and we can we can expand that a little bit it's kind of like I and mean, this isn't to baby any of the other religions but it's like primary school secondary school university or maybe it'd be more respectful if i said it's like a university um a, a, a degree and then a master's degree and then a phd and you know the the religion and the message evolved with the times but the underlying message of islam um islam came to establish monotheism that is all islam came to do um initially establish monotheism stop this shirk stop worshiping false gods you worship one God only. There is only one God. And then over time, obviously, this is how you worship the one God. And in a, in accordance with worshiping that one God, here are some rules, and not necessarily rules, but here are some ways in which um, in which you should conduct yourself. Um, these are the guidelines, and this is how God would best be pleased with you. Don't kill people. Don't steal, you know. Be good people. Don't cheat people. Don't do wrong by people very general basic rules and i think the thing that saddens me is now it's thousands and thousands of years down the line but let's just talk islam alone 1500 years down the line we seem to be muslims seem to be pushing things that we don't even really understand and we've stripped the well we've not even stripped the religion down to its basis basis we've done the opposite and we've we've really like complicated the religion to the fact where um well to the point where um and look i understand that there are rulings in islam but you don't you show this much hair if your scarf is in that position you're going to hell if you do this with your finger that's wrong your prayer's not accepted if you do this your prayer's not accepted if you wear your shorts that high not that high oh the beloved you're gonna burn in hell and look and there are some things that are halal and some things that are haram and we are all 
in search of the truth and we are all on the path to attain paradise obviously that's what we want at the end of the day but islam um although there are guidelines is not the religion where we point fingers and argue things which have uh, which many of them have only come uh, come about because of sectarianism um islam has been politicized and we don't really even understand that we're pushing that we're pushing somebody's sectarian views um somebody who had an agenda many many hundreds of years ago we're championing that and arguing for that to be a islamic principle when it's not yeah um i digress the second thing <laughs> yeah that saddens me a bit the second thing i would um encourage people to do is prostrate I, I i can't emphasize enough how powerful this is now look for all of our christians Isai alayhi salam um jesus used to prostrate as well <laughs> what i would encourage everybody to do is to prostrate i can't i can't explain how powerful this is um to put your head and face on the floor and submit um it, it, it humbles you in a way um to to acknowledge sometimes i mean all you have to do is look into the sky sometimes look out across the ocean to realize that there is a designer there is a creator and this is a very very complex design there must be a creator and and to submit and put your face on the floor and acknowledge that we are kind of we're not we're we're just flesh and bones and yeah we are powerful within our own rights as humans but we are nothing in the grand scheme of things to submit to god and ask god to take control um to show to show show me a sign you know you are the creator and i am just a creation i think there's something very very powerful in that and there's a peace that comes with it um during prostration you can also talk in the fact the fact that actually when you do prostrate um for people who are a bit more into all of the kind of stuff that i'm into there's a there's a pressure on your pineal gland as well for those that know about the pineal gland and your third eye and yeah 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 um these things aren't aren't accidental and the pressure on the um the, the pineal gland actually and in prostration does actually decalcify your pineal gland anyone that's interested in that kind of avenue but just um i would encourage people to prostrate prostrate just in your room you don't need to call god allah you can say god you can say whoever's out there <laughs> say whatever you want but ask but ask god um to guide you to show you a sign to help you and it says in the quran that when you come walking to god he comes running to you so anyone that's interested in islam two things i would advise you to do read the quran pick up pick up a quran i can tell i can send you to the right place if you want to get the, the quran that's user friendly the best one for you and prostrate um in the night time I guess it's a good time to do it maybe before you go to bed get a moment of peace and prostrate and ask god to guide you you know if you can even get into a habit of doing this um every now and then prostrate and just once you've done that come back to me and tell me how that feels you know stay stay down there for a well <laughs> if you're not if you're not used to prostrating you might pass out <laughs> you get a bit dizzy like oh this this islam thing's good you know <laughs> but no but prostrate and, and and ask allah to guide you ask allah to help you ask Allah to show you a sign um Allah so I, I submit to you um you're in control of this so guide me call out to your Lord um and I'm sure I'm sure you will you will see some some type of miracles and hear some answers inshallah that's all for today I don't know if I waffled on for too long it's one of those where you look back and you think I'm not used to doing this right now it's Ramadan I wish I could retake it but I'm just going to put it out as it is um i'm gonna go and finish my coffee read some quran spend some time with the family it has been nice remember to always think positively about things the broken crayon just remember the broken crayon and inshallah we will be back well, i think we're going to film tomorrow and um, we're going to do a little pod and maybe another vlog in a couple of days so i will see you then or we will see you then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah share some love with me because you guys don't give me love on my solo videos and then hoit hoit my little hoit <laughs> so long.